How's it going guys? I hope you're doing well. My name's Omnipower and I got a treat for you today. I put together a leveling guide for Lost Ark that will get you to level 50 in 15 hours or less. Let's get into it. This guide is meant to help you through one of the most important early game objectives, which is to hit level 50. Now, why is it important to hit level 50 you may ask? Well, to put it simply, that's when the real game begins. Think of the time you spend getting to level 50 as an opportunity to get used to your class, explore the game world, learn the mechanics, get introduced to the story, etc. But once you hit level 50, that's when you can do all sorts of fun activities like competitive PvP, chaos dungeons, co-op boss raids, and much more. Due to the fact that some of these activities are limited to one or two runs per day or week, the quicker you can start being able to do them, the quicker you get to make significant progress towards the current endgame content. Also, this game promotes creating multiple alternative characters, or alts for short. This is in order to obtain more daily or weekly rewards by completing limited content on all of them. There are a few different approaches to climbing to level 50, and I'm not claiming by any means that this is the fastest way. It's also not the slowest either. It averages around 15 hours or less for completion after testing it on multiple characters. I like to call this approach the power level method. And in my opinion, it is the smoothest way to climb to level 50. This method is fairly simple to execute. And I even made a visual roadmap that you guys can use to stay on track. Feel free to download or bookmark the image of this guide which can be found in the video description below. The idea is to prioritize the optimal XP rewards given by different quests in each location in order to hit level 40 as soon as possible. The real reason why we want to do this is because most classes unlock powerful skills at level 40. Usually, once these skills are available to you, they make the rest of the climb to level 50 pretty easy. So if you're following along with the visual roadmap, your objective is to focus on only completing the quest types listed above each continent. A useful in-game button to always keep you on track while doing quests is the little compass icon located on the right of any quest title. Clicking it will show you where the quest objective is located. Sometimes you may need to check the other layers of the minimap or click on certain portal icons on the map to know the proper route to get to your objectives. If you want to optimize your leveling speed even more, make sure you hit the escape key to skip cutscenes. Keep in mind that not all cutscenes will be skippable on your first character, and I also recommend watching them all on your first playthrough to get a feel for the game's story. Cutscenes will become skippable on alt characters created in the same server once you've completed the content on your first playthrough. If you accept certain quests unintentionally and would like to remove them from your list, it's as simple as opening your quest window, selecting the quest and abandoning it. Don't worry, you can still come back at another time and complete all quests you abandon by talking to the NPC that gives them to you. Another important habit you need to develop in order to optimize your travel time is to unlock every portal platform you find along your journey. These are used to teleport to key locations on every map by opening the world map with the M key and clicking on the unlocked portal platform you want to move to. I would also like to remind you to use your mount and tap the T key to auto move whenever possible while completing quests. Auto move makes your character move in the general direction they're facing and will pivot towards the direction of your most recent right mouse click. Holding down right click or tapping the key again during auto move will disable it. This speeds up your travel time tremendously as opposed to going on foot. Be aware that mounts aren't allowed in dungeons and other restricted instances. The last pro tip I wanna give you before we start breaking down this guide is to keep an eye on the gear you obtain from quest rewards or ground loop. If it has a blue upward facing arrow, when you see it on your inventory, it means it's more powerful than what you currently have equipped. Always try to equip the most powerful pieces you find so the bosses and mobs you run into hit you for less damage and are easier to kill. Now, let's get down to business. We start in the Lutheran continent. 
try to focus on completing just the orange and red quest lines for optimal XP rewards. Orange quests are the main story quests. These are mandatory and give you great XP rewards. Red quests are limited time tasks that need to be completed before their timer runs out. These are very easy to complete and are usually triggered along the way while traveling from one location to another. Once you've completed the main story for this continent, you should be around level 34 or higher. You will also unlock your first personal ship to travel across the sea to other continents. Some pro tips during ship travel are to make sure you're tapping the T key for auto move just like you would with your land mount. You can also open the map by tapping the M key and use Alt plus left click to create automatic ship routes on the C. If you manually deviate by right clicking while these automatic routes are activated, the ship will resume its plotted course when you're done manually moving it around. You can also cancel these auto routes at any time by opening the world map with the M key and clicking the decline button on the left side of the map. Another tip, is to make sure you're hitting spacebar whenever your gauge is full in order to activate a short speed boost on your ship. So anyway, right after you're done with the first continent, this is where the power level method comes into play. The typical route the game suggests you take is to go first to the island of Tortoik when you've completed Luteran. But instead, we're actually going to sail first to Arthetine. On the way there, you will notice blue quest markers have appeared on your quest window as well as your ocean map. Blue quests are your new type of storyline quests, which are usually focused on story content pertaining to a certain location. Once you've completed all the blue quests in a new location, you're essentially done with that territory's main story. I recommend completing the ones that appear on the ocean on your way to Arthetine. Just avoid the ones that ask you to go on land to specific continents for now. If at some point you anchor down on an instanced island and there's no visible exit on the map, you can leave by playing the Song of Return like you would at the end of a dungeon. Once we've completed all the sea tutorials, we continue on our journey to Arthetine. Once we've reached Arthetine, we're going to focus on completing the blue and red quest lines for optimal XP rewards. You'll also notice I listed yellow quest lines in this location as well. But from here on out, you're going to have to be selective about which of these yellow quests you decide to complete. Personally, I don't recommend completing any yellow quests in other continents that give rewards below 9k XP. I like to refer to these yellow quests that give anything higher than 9k as optimal yellow quests. Right before you accept the quest, you can check what rewards it gives for completion. If you've accepted yellow quests with subpar rewards, just abandon them and keep checking for others with higher rewards by talking to NPCs with the yellow exclamation mark above their heads. While completing Arthetine, you should hit level 40 fairly quickly since the XP rewards in this continent are significantly higher than in Tortoik or Anik. By the time you hit level 40, you've essentially hit your big power spike by unlocking a new powerful ability for your class. This will help you clear bosses more efficiently as well as mobs. Once you finish all the blue and red quests in this continent, you should be around level 45 plus. You should also have unlocked a new sailor to join you on your journey. Now we'll set sail to Anik, but first I want to talk to you about the importance of harbor ports. These ports can be found on the coastal regions of all the mainland masses, and their icon is a golden anchor. Inside these ports, you will find an NPC that will let you embark on an ocean liner to quickly travel to previously unlocked ports for a small fee. This is much faster than traveling to these locations using your own ship, and it's amazing as a time saver when you need to return the continents you've already been to in order to complete other tasks. Also, if you're ever in another part of a continent and want to teleport to its port, you can just open the world map with the M key and click the yellow button at the bottom left that says to port. You will be charged a small teleportation fee, but again, this is a huge time saver when it comes to cross-continental travel. Anyway, once you've arrived at Anik, we're going to focus on the blue, red, and optimal yellow quest lines for the best XP rewards. You should be level 48 plus when you complete all the recommended quests for this continent and you'll also unlock a new ship before setting sail to your next destination 
which is the small island of Tortoik. Once we've arrived at Tortoik, we're going to focus on blue and red quests only. There are also a few optimal yellow quests here that you can do if you like, but they're not mandatory. Once you've completed all the recommended quests for this continent, you should be around level 49 or higher and should have also unlocked a new sailor for your ship. Now we can set sail to North Burn. Once you've arrived at North Burn, you're almost done hitting your level 50 goal. You still have to do the first blue, red, and optimal yellow quest lines here until you reach the castle. Once you reach the castle and speak to the queen, you'll complete a few more blue quests for her and boom, congratulations, you should hit level 50 around this point. A lot of new systems should unlock at this point, while others need to be unlocked by completing their tutorial quests. Here is where the next important detail comes into play. Once you've met with the queen, Beatrice will call you to Trision to complete a purple quest. Play the song of Trision and go meet Beatrice to get the purple quest for your first awakening skill. An awakening skill is basically referred to as an ultimate ability, or ulti for short. These are usually pretty devastating and require chaos shards to be able to execute them when they're ready. Chaos shards can be purchased at the item sellers in any of the main cities. Once you've completed your awakening skill quest, you will come back to burn and continue doing the rest of the blue quests. I would avoid completing chaos dungeons until you're at a higher item level so you can get better rewards. This is now the end of this guide, but stay tuned for more like it in the future. I don't claim to know everything about the game, but I try my best to stay informed. I would also like to learn from you if you have any useful things to share. Anyway, was this guide helpful? Did I miss anything? Do you guys have other methods you prefer instead? I would like to hear your thoughts on the subject in the comments below. Also, if you want to watch me live and find me streaming Lost Ark practically every day at twitch.tv slash omnipower. Thanks for going on this journey with me. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and ring the bell to get notified about my future content. Always remember to stay curious because knowledge is power.